As of January 2024, I've ridden 1,073 different roller coasters spread across all six habitable continents. To break that list down into a top 25 is an extremely difficult task. We're looking at the top 2% of all roller coasters I've ridden, and there's so many contributing factors why I might consider a ride top tier, such as how many times I was able to ride it, how it was running that day, how long has it been since the last time I rode it. So you have to take those variables and then apply it to the ride itself. The biggest qualities I look for in a good ride are strong pacing, dynamic or I would even say aggressive maneuvers, a good sense of speed, a variety of elements but I definitely lean towards ejector airtime as being my favorite, and when possible good theming is also appreciated. Every ride that I'm about to showcase in this video I would consider world class and asking me to order them is probably like asking a parent who's your favorite child. There's so many brilliant attractions out there so before we get into the top 25 let's talk about a couple honorable mentions, rides that just barely miss the cut. Leviathan at SeaWorld in Australia and Boardwalk Bullet at Kima Boardwalk are two favorite fantastic gravity group designed wooden roller coasters. Outlaw Run and Wicked Cyclone are two incredible RMCs, both of which have definitely been featured in past top 25s, but as I've either gotten recent rides on them that have changed my opinion, or have experienced new attractions that have taken their place, for one reason or another, they didn't make the cut. And really that's the thing with these videos is my list is always evolving. This is not the same ranking I had last year or even a couple months ago, and so I look forward to seeing how it evolves, especially as I experience new parks and new rides, including those in Dubai and Abu Dhabi coming up, which look to be absolutely awesome. And this is a great time to mention that if you haven't already subscribed to Coaster Studios, please do. There's some amazing content coming soon from those locations, as well as over on our Patreon. If you like what you see and you want to support the channel even more, we have some really fun bonus videos from the Emirates coming up, as well as our early access videos. If you can't wait to hear about what we think of these rides, Patreon finds out first before they go up on the main channel. Now let's dive into this list. Barely making the cut, at the number 25 spot we have Conda at Walby, Belgium. This is an intimate mega coaster open in 2021, has some really spectacular airtime moments and features that next-gen layout from Intamin, showcasing a lot of new modern maneuvers that we didn't get on previous attractions. It's a really complete ride experience with a great theme, and I certainly hope that we see more rides like this out there from Intamin. At the number 24 spot, we have Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure at Universal's Islands Adventure in Florida. At one point in time, this was the most expensive roller coaster ever built, and I can see why. It's yet again a ride from Intamin, this time being a multi-launch coaster. In fact, it has seven distinct launch sections spread throughout this really immersive experience. One of the best themed roller coasters in the world, it's nowhere near as thrilling as Conda. This is more of a family thrill coaster, but man, is it probably the best family thrill coaster in the world. I walk off this ride with a huge smile on my face. It's one that I would do again and again and again if it didn't always have a two hour line. At number 23, we have Mystic Timbers at Kings Island. This is my favorite roller coaster by Great Coasters International, and to me, it's about as perfect as a wooden coaster can get. It opened in 2017, and to this day is still silky smooth. It's an out and back layout with really low to the ground maneuvers, each hill just perfectly flowing into the next, sending you up out of your seat. I could actually ride this thing all day. The only thing that would make this better is if the shed was actually good. Let's move on from King's Island over to King's Dominion. Intimidator through 5 is my most ridden roller coaster ever, and I will always hold a soft spot in my heart for it. And frankly, because I've ridden it so much, I think the ride is actually at a bit of a disadvantage because if this wasn't at my home park growing up, I think I would place this ride a lot higher. But I've gotten so used to it that it doesn't phase me like it used to. But objectively, this is like the most intense roller coaster ever built. And I can confidently say that after experiencing all these rides. None of them feature as crazy of a moment as that first turn on I-305, when you're going from a 305 foot hill to a low to the ground bank turn where you're guaranteed to gray out and you might even black out. We'll probably never see another ride out there like I-305. It is not for everyone, but man, do I love this thing. And just narrowly missing the top 20, we have our first RMC to make the cut. It's Storm Chaser at Kentucky Kingdom. And talk about how an experience can vary depending on when you wrote it. I've ridden Storm Chaser in just about every variable condition possible. In fact, the first time I experienced it, I didn't think it was that great because it was running a little slow. But I've also experienced it in years when it is just flying so fast that this is like one of the most aggressive roller coasters out there. Some of these maneuvers are just so powerful. The airtime is some of the best in the world. And the fact that this was a retrofit of a dueling wind roller coaster and that they are able to convert it into one track and that's as good as it is, is just a testament to how incredible Rocky Mountain construction is. And if you want to learn more about Storm Chaser and RMC, we've produced two different documentaries that might interest you. Save My Park tells the history of Kentucky Kingdom after it was closed for several years and was able to reopen. And This Is How We Roll tells the story of Rocky Mountain construction, how they were able to get started 
and become a real player in the amusement industry and build some of the greatest rides on the planet. Save My Park is available for viewing on the Coaster Studios YouTube channel, and This Is How We Roll can be viewed at vimeo.com slash on demand slash This Is How We Roll movie. Enter the promo code TOP25 for 20% off your purchase. Well, let's head back to Europe for Fantasialand and their 2016 Intamin multi-launch coaster, Terran. And when this thing first debuted in 2016, I became obsessed and I was like, I have to ride this one day. The way the park integrated this ride into Klugheim, this immersive themed environment, you just have coaster track going everywhere. You don't know where the ride just came from or where it's going. Instead of having like distinct moments, the layout is cohesive. One maneuver just perfectly leads into the next. It is so incredible. One day I really hope to experience that at night during their winter trauma event. I've been to Fantasia Land twice now and that is definitely a bucket list experience. And at the number 19 spot, we have the biggest roller coaster that B&M has ever built. And interestingly enough, the only B&M to make my top 25, it's Fury 325 at Carowinds. And this has widely become a fan favorite roller coaster. I know when I first wrote it back when it opened, I said that was the best roller coaster I'd ever ridden. In the Golden Ticket Awards, it continues to get voted at the number one spot. It is just so fun, so fast, incredibly long ride, one of the longest roller coasters in the world. It's super smooth, and you know, B&M has other giga coasters out there, but they don't come close to touching Fury. That is by far their best work. But let's move from the Carolinas up to Pennsylvania for Hershey Park and Sky Rush. And remember when we were talking about Intimidator 3 or 5 and I mentioned how I don't think there'll ever be another ride like that ever again? I feel that exact same thing about Sky Rush. This ride is freaking demented. I know I've said this in past videos, but that first drop literally feels like a car crash in the best way possible. Sky Rush has these winged seats that have no lateral support. So when you hit a turn, you aggressively get flung to the side. You're just launched over airtime hills, flying around this lake. This coaster also is probably not for everyone. A lot of people are bothered by their restraints and how they crush your thighs. Personally, they've never really bothered me, not enough to where it took away from the ride experience, which is why I still place this thing really high. And for number 17, let's head to Cedar Point, generally considered to be the park with the best roller coasters in the world. Over in the back of the park in Frontier Town, they have a ride called Maverick. This is an intimate multi-launch coaster that stays low to the ground and is just super fast paced and aggressive. It tosses you around in the same way that Intimidator 305 does. It has a beyond vertical drop, really some of the best pacing out there. So many of the modern Intamin multi-launch coasters that have opened the past couple of years are here thanks to Maverick. It still holds up as one of the best. And just narrowly missing the top 15 spot is a relatively new ride. This is Airy Force One at Fun Spot America Atlanta. This ride debuted just last year and really put Fun Spot Atlanta on the map. The maneuvers on this attraction are just so aggressive. You're getting flipped upside down, staring at the ground, passing over outer bank turns into a double up. There's a quad down at the end. It has one of my favorite inversions ever with what we call the arcade roll flying over top of this building. Airy Force One is an unreal attraction and by far the best ride in that region. So let's enter our top 15 with yet another RMC. This is Zadra at Energylandia. And I know a lot of people have ridden this thing and swear by it being the number one ride on the planet. And I mean, I get it. This thing is incredible. It just so happens that for me, there are other rides that I would put over it. But I'll tell you what Zadra does incredibly well is pacing and speed. Not only is Zadra enormous, but it traverses this course with such momentum that you have no idea what is going on. You slam to a stop in those brakes with so much speed, you have to take a huge breather like, holy crap, I can't believe that just happened. It's something that you just gotta experience. It's that good. And at the number 14 spot, we have the incredibly unique world's only Aero Fourth Dimension Roller Coaster X2. This was a prototype attraction that actually sent the company that made it into bankruptcy. It was that ambitious. It stands as the forefront first attraction that you see when you're entering Six Flags Magic Mountain, which is the park with the most roller coasters in the world. And this ride is like actually scary. You go up this 200 plus foot tall lift hill backwards, flip over to face the ground. You have an almost vertical drop and your seats are rotating throughout this course to face you in different directions. The only reason why this ride is not higher is because it definitely has its flaws. It is is not the smoothest and when you're in an outside seat it definitely can be a lot but i just love this concept so so much it just had to make the list but let's head to sweden for lucky 13 and wildfire at Komarden. you think airy force one is in an odd park wildfire is located in a literal zoo but man is the setting beautiful 
gives you a world-class view off to the side of the water, these huge towering trees, and then a really excellent layout. The other RMCs I've talked about in this video use their iBox track. This is actually a wood coaster using a topper track, so it feels more raw and out of control. It's one of only four roller coasters ever built to use that system, but out of all the topper track rides, this one is definitely my favorite. I just think it is so freaking cool and one of the most imposing rides ever. Just looking at this thing, you're like, wow, that is a big roller coaster. And speaking of which, from one incredible Woody to another, at number 12, we have El Toro at Six Flags Great Adventure. This is my favorite roller coaster at any Six Flags park. I've always had such a soft spot for this ride, but it is unfortunately one of those rides that just steadily over time it has dropped little by little. It's still incredible, it still rides well, although at times it definitely can feel a little rough. But its airtime hills are just world class, that drop is unbelievable, and even the way the ride looks is just so iconic. I I will always love this thing. And just barely missing our top 10 is Wildcat's Revenge, another new for 2023 attraction. This one back at Hershey Park. And what's funny is prior to it opening, I thought for sure Skyrush was still gonna be my favorite ride there. But after doing Wildcat's Revenge, I was just so blown away by it. The more I rode it, the more I was like, holy crap, this thing is insane. It feels like a smaller version of Zadra. And the fact that I have this over Zadra just tells you how powerful this ride is. The layout gets better and better as the ride goes along. Everything just becomes tighter, more compact. I was really, really impressed by this attraction. I know not everyone's gonna agree with that, but you know, everyone has a different list. People have different opinions and that's okay. But if you like hearing my opinion, wanna hear our thoughts on some of your favorite roller coasters, be sure to visit our Cameo. You can send in your top 10 favorite rides and we'll send you a personalized video roasting your opinion. We've had so much fun with these and it's a great thing you can share with your friends on social media, send as a gift for another coaster enthusiast in your life, or if it's something you just need a good laugh for, cameo.com slash coaster studios. And I'll say that coming up with my top 10 was incredibly difficult. Every single one of these is a 10 out of 10, starting with Hyperion at Energylandia. This is an enormous, intimate hyper coaster. It's like a bigger, better Skyrush. Although Skyrush still has the edge when it comes to a better first drop. But Hyperion has excellent pacing with its first set of towering hills, and then the second half, low to the ground, bank turns and quick changes in direction. Everything about the experience just blew me away. Absolutely one of the best rides in Europe. And just a little bit north of that is another Intamin coaster that we got to talk about. It's Taiga at Linnanmaki in Finland. This opened the year after Hyperion, in 2019. It's a terrain coaster built onto the hillside, incredibly compact. It's remarkable that Intamin was able to fit in so much ride into this space. And the fact that it's as good as it is is just a testament to how talented those designers are. You have two launches, multiple inversions, some really whippy moments where you're just getting tossed around from side to side. I loved riding this thing and it's something that I can't wait to go back and eventually do again one day. And then number eight, we have a ride that many consider to be the best roller coaster in the world. I know I certainly did when I first rode it. It's Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point. It was the first hyper hybrid. So we have a vertical drop over 200 feet, a really long ride experience over 5,000 feet long four inversions, and I believe it still holds the record for the most airtime on any steel coaster. Each hill on this thing is so strong, it has a crazy finale of six airtime hills in a row as it's hitting the brake run. The common complaint with this ride is that it's a little repetitive, which I understand. I think some of the rides I have above this have a better variety of moments, but I still love this ride for what it is. And at number seven, we have our final new for 2023 roller coaster to make the cut. It's Batman Gotham City Escape at Parque Warner Madrid. Yet again, another intimate LSM multi-launch coaster. This one with three launches, multiple inversions, an awesome top hat, and some elaborate theming. That's definitely a big advantage that this ride has over a coaster like Taiga. This is a story-driven attraction. Brilliant presentation, execution, 10 out of 10. I love it so much, but when I really thought about it, I still just give the slight edge to Jurassic World Velocicoaster at Universal's Islands of Adventure. Same type of ride, also elaborately themed, but what I love about Velocicoaster is how perfectly it builds on itself. The beginning of the ride is good. I love being in that Velociraptor enclosure, some really fun moments, but the ride just gets faster and faster and faster. Those elements become crazier. You hit that second launch, go up a top hat, then you're winding around this bridge, getting tossed around into a stall, outer banks, and then the single best moment comes at the very end with the Mosasaurus roll. That inversion is just unbelievable. This really is just a wow attraction. 
but it just barely missed my top five. And from here on out, really any one of these roller coasters that I'm about to mention could be my number one. They're all just that good. But here's how I've placed them. At number five, we have the Voyage at Holiday World. Without a doubt, this is my favorite wind roller coaster on the planet. The more I ride it, the more I am just astounded that this thing exists, how long of an experience it is, and that it just doesn't die out. This is some of the best pacing on the planet. The design of this roller coaster is unreal. It goes so far back there into the woods, tossing you around like a rag doll, and Holiday World keeps it smooth, retracking it every single season to keep it the best it possibly can be, and it shows. And also, if you get the opportunity to ride it, at night, it's that much better. At number four, we're heading all the way across the world to Japan and Nagashima Spyland. They have an RMC coaster called Hakuge. It was a redo of an Intamin wind roller coaster called White Cyclone, and this ride is just enormous, and it is beautiful. Stunning blue track on a white structure with a layout that is just relentless. I literally had bruises on my thighs after riding this thing all day. It was that powerful. I think you could absolutely make an argument for it being the best RMC, and for me, I went back and forth between this and Iron Gwazi at Busch Gardens Tampa. Both of those rides have a lot of similarities in that they run way too fast and are just non-stop action until the very end. And before riding Iron Gwazi, I really didn't expect it to be my favorite RMC. I thought I was gonna like Steel Vengeance more, you know, Iron Gwazi beats it with like one foot in height, one mile per hour faster, but Iron Gwazi's layout is just that good. It takes a lot out of you. Like this roller coaster is exhausting to experience over and over and over again. It feels like it should be illegal. I absolutely love it. So that's what I have at my number three spot. For number two, let's head to Belgium for Plopsaland de Pan. And there couldn't be a more fitting name for a roller coaster than the ride to happiness. I was absolutely blown away by this roller coaster. I had done a mock extreme spinner before with Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City, which is a great ride, but Ride to Happiness kicked it up a notch. The spinning on this ride is out of control. The way that you take these maneuvers, we are going through a vertical loop, an inversion, an airtime hill in a different direction every time. No two rides on Ride to Happiness are identical. That makes it extremely rewritable because you don't know how this next moment is going to feel, so it continues to surprise you, but no matter whether you're facing forwards, backwards, sideways, your body is just getting thrown around, you're going to hit the brake run not knowing what just happened, it's going to take you at least like three rides to figure out this layout. It is without a doubt the best roller coaster in Europe, that's for sure, and I don't blame anyone for having this at their number one spot. But as of how I'm feeling today, at my number one spot, I have Edge and Ica at Fuji Q Highland. So remember when we talked about X2, which made the number 14 spot? I mentioned how that was the only Aero 4D coaster ever built. Well, after Aero went bankrupt, SNS Worldwide absorbed their assets and they produced two fourth dimension coasters. And it fixes every problem that X2 has. So not only is it like taller and faster, but it is smooth, it has more inversions, better elements, there's no dead space. Ride of Happiness flings you around side to side. This flips you around top to bottom. So you hit an inversion and then start doing a backflip while going upside down. To this day, I've never laughed more on a roller coaster than my first time on Edge and Ica, And I think that really says a lot. The only other time I've had a similar feeling on a roller coaster is when I rode Ride of Happiness and Iron Gwazi for the first time. And that's why those are my top three roller coasters. And I think they're gonna be pretty tough to beat. But that is how I place my top 25. Let's mention a few rides that surprisingly didn't make the cut and talk about why. The elephant in the room here, Lightning Rod at Dollywood. When I first rode that, I said that was the best roller coaster on the planet. Unfortunately, the ride has just continued to drop for me. And now that we're seeing the removal of the launch and replacement with a chain and how frustrating it is sometimes to experience it because it's closed, it has definitely dropped out of my top 25. And also a similar but kind of different situation with the original Raptor coasters, Wonder Woman, Golden Lasso Coaster, and Railblazer. While they're definitely starting to feel a little bit rough, I think the roller coasters that have taken their place on this list are longer experiences. You know, those Raptors are definitely short rides, but I still love them. A couple other rides that have made the top 25 in the past that didn't this time, Ghost Rider, Knott's Berry Farm, and also Karnan at Hansa Park. I love all these, and they absolutely would still make my top 50. Narrowing this down to just 25 was like pulling teeth, but this was the order I came up with. Let me know down in the comments below what your favorite roller coasters are. Again, feel free to send them over on Cameo and we'll give you our thoughts on them as well. If you want to hear about more of these rides specifically, there are individual reviews for all of them already available on this channel. I go into them in much more detail in those videos. Go give them a watch. So thank you for joining me and make sure to stay tuned for more rankings in the future and I'll see you next time.